Matt Bruce, CEO of Brute Strength, co-founder. And uh, one thing that people leave out a lot is the Olympic weightlifting national champion. I mean, this dude is a, is a walking legend and uh, just walking the streets of Baton Rouge as a, uh, as a tour guide, as I, as I hear, man, thanks for being on. Appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. So obviously with you, you've been around the block, uh, for quite some time, whether it's from, you know, folks, uh, obviously may be familiar with your career, uh, others, uh, as, as a hatch leader, others as a coach, uh, there's just really so many different things, but, uh, you know, today, obviously what I want to, uh, you know, discuss if it's okay with you is, is really brute strength. Um, and just kind of getting into the nitty gritty of where brute strength started, uh, and kind of how it came to be and then where it is today. So, uh, I'd just love to have you start and, and kind of fill me in on, uh, how it all came to be and, um, where this kind of birthed from really. For sure. Uh, so as you stated earlier, I was an Olympic weightlifter, uh, made seven world teams, many national championships and so on and so forth. And while I was training uh, for my sport, um, I knew of CrossFit, but wasn't familiar with it too much. But every six months or so, a guy uh, would come to our gym to come train. And I knew he was living in Utah and I knew he competed in the sport of CrossFit, but he would mm -hmm. come to our gym in Baton Rouge uh, every six months to visit family. And while he was in town, he would do his Olympic weightlifting at our at my gym uh, to right. get some advice from my, you know, high level coaches like my coach Gail Hatch sure. and while being there I remember in 2011 uh, he was saying he was telling me that he was going to go compete at the CrossFit Games mm -hmm. and me being in my you know secluded Olympic weightlifting world I was like yeah good <laughs> who cares I didn't even know what CrossFit <laughs> I had heard about it didn't think it was a big sport wasn't worried about it he goes and competes. Uh, I see him months later. I ask him how he did. He's like, oh, we won the CrossFit Games. I was like, cool. Sounds interesting. Uh, still uh, not knowing too much about the sport. I go on to retire after the 2012 Olympic trials, and I knew I wanted to get into coaching. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be exactly like my coach, uh, Coach Hatch. I wanted to be an Olympic weightlifting coach and, and develop youth athletes all the way into Olympians. Mm -hmm. And... My coach, I'll never forget, he looks at me, he said, Matt, if you want to become a coach, he said, don't ever step in my gym again mm. and go out there and do it. He's like, I've taught you everything you need to know to be a coach. Go wow. out there and do it. And like a, like a broken soul, like I didn't know where to turn. And I remembered, mm. you know, this CrossFit thing. I was like, you know what? These gyms, I know they have bumper plates. I know they have barbells. It'd be yeah. a perfect opportunity for me to start a barbell club inside one of these gyms. I Googled CrossFit, found the closest one to my house, set up a meeting with the owner. I was like, hey, man, do you mind if like, I have a corner of your gym during off hours and just train a couple kids? He's like, are you kidding me? He's like, I'd love to have you. Wow. So that's how I, I got introduced into CrossFit you know, more. And then while I was there at the gym, you know, CrossFit's addictive, right? I start seeing these guys sweating next door and, and doing these things. Yeah. I'm like, man, like, I start joining in some classes. Well, then that, that old friend starts coming to train at my gym now, right? And he then goes on to win the 2012 uh, CrossFit Games on a team. His name's mm -hmm. Michael Cashew. And, you know, I looked at him and I was like, hey, dude, I was like, I was like, I think we have an opportunity here. I was like, I know how to coach Olympic weightlifting at a very high level. Uh, you obviously know how to train, compete, and coach CrossFit at a high level. I was like, I think we can give something of value to athletes around the world uh, and we can help coach them online. And I'll never forget, he looked at me, he said, Matt, who the hell would buy something like that online uh, wow. when they had their own coach at their gym? And I was like, Mike, you don't understand, man. Like, we can give, like, expert coaching. You know, like, these gyms, they just have, you know, these coaches that, that are also businessmen and running a gym. They might not know how to train at an elite high level. And he said, you know what, Matt? He's like, what do I need to do? I said, man, I just need you to write CrossFit program because I don't know how to do that. He's like, okay. He's like, I'll write CrossFit programming for you. You do, you do the Olympic weightlifting and strength portion, and let's see where it goes. Uh, so that was 2013. Uh, that was the start of Brute. Uh, we kind of found our little niche in the market there, uh, having mm -hmm. these expert coaches. Uh, we then brought on um, a gymnastics coach, Nick Sorrell. 
Uh, we ended up bringing on an aerobic capacity endurance coach with Chris Henshaw. Uh, we continue to grow uh, by bringing on other coaches all throughout mm -hmm. the field. Uh, Sean Pastouche, uh, when it comes to uh, rehab and prehab, uh, train, sink, or swim when it comes to our swimming. And we just kind of grew into this, this conglomerate of expert coaches, uh, mm -hmm. all unifying together for one commonality, which was to coach CrossFit, right? Uh, we didn't want to be one person, a jack of all trades. We right. wanted to have a community of coaches coaching together for our athletes. I think what you said is in something you kind of glossed over, and, and I want to point this out. This was 2013, and you had the wherewithal and the vision to go, I think we should take this online. Because at the time, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, of course the Internet's around, but, but, but no one is doing this. And correct me if I'm wrong, I don't believe there was anyone doing this. Correct. Uh, you had a couple of people kind of dabbling in it, but what I wanted to do was bring technology to it. So we were the absolute first people to use an online software platform to deliver our program. Uh, before this, people were helping and coaching, you know, friends and, and, you know, people across state lines and they would just send them Google sheets, you know, copy and paste what they were right. doing and, and, uh, and whatnot, but nothing on a high level with like, you know, the software involved, you know, in instance, like us creating our gymnastics progression program, right? To where you level mm -hmm. up through this uh, progression in this program. So we kind of set ourselves apart as the kind of like technological leader in, in, in our mm -hmm. space. That's impressive. Um, it, it really is. So, so you bring on all these guys and there's, as you said, there's all these experts in their own uh, discipline. And I, I was, it's interesting. I was watching that video where it's, uh, it's, it's on the YouTube page. It's what is brute. And there's a, there's a bunch of different guys, all the, a lot of the guys that you mentioned just a second ago, uh, experts in their respective fields. And you said something that stood out to me and, uh, you said, you know, I felt like coming in, I knew, I, you know, I was an expert on weightlifting and you said, you know, I felt like I knew everything when it came to weightlifting. And you said, I'm just going to train these people like weightlifters and they're going to get super strong. What did you, what did you find, uh, yeah. using that? I ended up crushing guys. Uh, it was pretty yeah. sad. And these guys would do everything I would tell them, you know, I'd train them three hours a day in Olympic weightlifting, just like I used to train, uh, because you go through stages of, of learning and coaching, right? You go through the stage where, uh, you don't know anything. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you go to the stage where you think you know it all. And then you go into the stage where you really realize, hey, you really don't know anything, right? Mm -hmm. When we first started, I thought I knew it all. I thought like, oh, you know, like I got this. Like we're going to train these guys just like weightlifters. They're going to get super strong. Well, then I'm training them for three hours a day in weightlifting. And then Mike's also programming two hours or so of gymnastics and CrossFit. And then I'm wondering why these guys are getting stronger and then, you know, just establishing rapport with the athletes and they, they're coming back to me and saying, coach, I'm just tired. I'm beat down. Like, this is a lot of work. And then I really start to realize, like, man, maybe I need to reevaluate, like, what I'm doing and how much volume I'm giving these guys. Mm -hmm. uh, because now in Olympic weightlifting, you're just dealing with one modality in, in essence, yeah. right? You're only dealing with creatine right. phosphate system, the immediate system, exploding, one lift. My whole career – you know, there was no such thing as cardio. You would do one lift, maximum like eight reps, and then you'd sit back down for two minutes. You'd completely right. regain yourself and stand back up and do it again, right? So once you start introducing these other energy systems like glycogenic and, and aerobic energy systems, uh, it definitely impacts the central nervous system and how you need to train that system. So again, I took a, a big, you know, uh, bite of humble pie and, and mm. referred to a bunch of uh, strength coaches that, that I knew and basically, you know, conversed with them. I was like, hey, you're a hatch guy. You learned from Coach Hatch just like I did. You know, how did you adapt this for your football team? He's like, oh, Matt, you know, I ran into the same problem. It's like you can't train these guys like weightlifters. You have to take all these things to an effect. And so, you know, during that 2013, 14, 15 was really like a redefining uh, period for me as a coach. Uh, again, uh, becoming very humble in my approach, realizing there's a lot I still had to learn and mm. kind of shaping myself as a coach and my programming from that aspect. 
So you come along, the you know, Brute at the time was the leader, uh, at least technologically, um, and 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 just from a discipline standpoint, had all these experts in, in, in these you know, respective disciplines. So fast forward, I mean, you know, it's it's twenty twenty one. Brute started in thirteen. Fill in the gap as best you can between then and where Brute was and what you guys were trying to achieve and where Brute is now for everyone listening. Absolutely. So uh, where Brute was now, we were uh, we were definitely young. Uh, I wouldn't say immature, but we, we were having fun. It was a group of friends uh, just programming, having fun, uh, you know, having the time of our lives, right? Uh, it was during this boom of the market where everybody was hungry and thirsty for this knowledge. That's when uh, you know, during that early, uh, you know, 2014, 15, 16, 17 period, uh, everybody wanted to go to every seminar you can go to, right? Uh, Klokoff mm-hmm. is doing seminars, uh, Kendrick Ferris, uh, you name it. If there was some kind of mindset seminar or something, people just couldn't consume enough, right? Yeah. It was kind of like the gold rush and everybody was kind of like, uh, you know, trying to find their little piece. Uh, and then you had to realize like, you know, what's really going to separate you as a coach, right? Because then companies right. start thinking about things like scalability. How can I scale this so I can get more and more money and stuff like that? Right. And Brute had, uh, uh, you know, take a step back and be like, is that really who we want to be? Did we create this company to be this scalable, large company where we're not even really getting personal touches with our mm-hmm. athletes anymore? Right. So where we're kind of evolving to now is we really, uh, we really want to make those personal touches with each of our athletes. And we're doubling down on that focus of making sure our coaches are, are literally, you know, touching our athletes in, in multiple ways, shape or fashion. We don't want to just want to send them programming and not hear from them. Right. We want to hear feedback. We want to we want to do, you know, video analysis of them. We want to take them along step by step through this yeah. journey and let them know that that we want to be there for them. So the biggest change that we've made is really doubling down on on our athletes and trying to give more of this like one on one attention, uh, but while still having the experts in the field, you know, mm-hmm. like me, you know, like uh, I, Nick Fowler might have an athlete that he's a one on one coach for, but he's referring to me on a weekly basis. Hey, man, can you check out Cara's technique on a snatch? Uh, give me some advice on what I should do with her programming here or there, mm-hmm. you know, whatever it may be. Uh, so while we still have like this big one-on-one approach with our athletes. Uh, we still have this group of, of, of experts that are there as resources to help uh, our athletes develop. Do you feel like that's also what sets Brood apart uh, is – because, I mean, it sounds like the, the shift to more one-on-one focus, right? Correct. Yep. Uh, I, I do believe. Uh, again, you know, we see a lot of these uh, bigger companies like Brood are having to make that decision now. You know, am I still can working on scaling, right? Scaling, scaling, mm. scaling, getting as many members as possible. Uh, and yes, the direction Brute is taking now is we want more personal touches. We want to, you know, invest in our athletes, really, because if we invest in our athletes, that's it's going to take care of itself, right? Uh, so our our vision moving forward is investing in our athletes and spending the extra time and giving them more value than they even ever expected to get from us. And I mean, this is a shameless plug, but I, I, I mean, it is the Brood Strength Podcast after all. And I, I can say personally from, from working with L, one of the one-on-one coaches, that's that's really, in my opinion, that is the value separator. It's the, it's the, it's the small group athlete camps. It's the one-on-one attention. It's the video analysis. It's the, it's the you know, Zoom calls every month. It's, it's, it's those things, in my opinion, that, that makes it worth it. Like you said, it's investing in the athletes. So I, I, you know, that's not just hot air for everyone listening that's uh you know practicing what you preach too so i i I can certainly attest to that um okay so brute moving forward focus on the one-on-one attention focus on investing in the uh in the athletes and away from this this huge conglomerate scalable like we just want as many people and we don't really care as long as you know their credit card doesn't fail we don't care now obviously you know you know, this is not a nonprofit and we understand that. And I think everyone understands that listening, but at the same time, what I'm hearing for you or from you rather is this is something that we see, uh, kind of the market going forward is this one-on-one attention, this investing in our athletes, this, uh, specific and personalized programming is, am I hearing you right? 
Correct. Uh, because again, uh, you know, during this booming gold rush, it was a free for all. You know, everybody just was thirsting and craving that knowledge and attention. Uh, and then, you know, now that that's kind of settled down, uh, people really want something that's of value to them, right? Not, not what's the hottest thing on mm. Instagram at the moment. Uh, they really see value in products. They've now tried multiple different systems. And right. They're trying to decide which one actually provides the most value. Uh, so that's where, you know, we feel like we want to separate ourselves is provide more value uh, to each and every one of our clients. So let me ask this then. Knowing what you know now, if you could go back and give the Matt Bruce of 2012, 2013, maybe a, um, I don't know, a piece of advice, <laughs> what would you say? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I definitely wouldn't change anything. Hmm. Um, if I can give myself one piece of advice. I would say Man, I don't know. Um I would say travel when I was younger more. Mm -hmm. Uh you know, make more uh in person connections. Uh now having kids, it's a lot harder for me to travel and I miss those days. Of, of being on the road and, and, you know, doing seminars and, and whatnot. So I would, I would say if anything, uh, travel a little bit more, try to get out there in front of people more to, to spread my knowledge of, of myself and brute. Uh, but yeah, realistically, like I've, we've all, I've made mistakes, uh, for mm -hmm. sure, but mistakes is, are what you grow from. Uh, yeah. So I don't regret anything more what I want to change it because if I'd never made those mis mistakes, I probably wouldn't have been able to grow as a, as a human. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I don't think I would have changed much. I love that. Uh, because I, I think, I think the, very similarly, it, it's like, um, it's so hard to grow. This is my thoughts. It's so hard to grow without friction. Nothing in the world grows without friction, not a muscle, not a plant. And I think in that, in that tension or in that friction of who you are and who you want to be is, is really, it's, it's cliche, but it's, it, it, I think it's true. It's where the magic happens. It's, it's where we come to life as human beings. It's, I think it's the part of life that actually makes us human. And, uh, so I look, man, I, I really appreciate that. It's like, Hey, uh, did I, did I do it all right? No, probably not. But would I have changed it, anything? No, because I wouldn't be where I am today. So I, I, I can, I can appreciate that. And, uh, a lot of respect for you and, and what you've been able to, to, to build. Um, so l let me ask this as, as we're kind of closing up here, what are you most excited about right now? I mean, as you look at the new landscape of brute, bringing on decks, uh, Hopkins, um, obviously the, the onslaught of amazing one-on-one -on -one coaches. Um, what do you, what are you most, what are you most excited about? I'm most excited about CrossFit. Uh, I think most people are. I think CrossFit kind of took a lull, you know, there in the last couple of years um, mm -hmm. with some misdirection, leadership, uh, miscommunication, how the organization was going to be run, what was, what was happening media wise, mm -hmm. what was the emphasis, you know, it was just so many differing things that nobody, everybody was super confused on what the future of the sport of CrossFit is. Uh, I'm excited about CrossFit. I'm excited about the new CEO uh, taking over. I think the direction he's leading this in, leading us in, is back to those glory days of 15, 16, 17, uh, where the sport was just exploding and growing yeah. so tremendously fast. Uh, so first and foremost, I'm excited. Like, hey, we have regionals again. Like, <laughs> two right. years ago, I was just like, there goes regionals. We'll never see them again. And like, mm. that was honestly one of the best times because like you get to hang out with people within your region, you know, and, and, and granted it's not regionals anymore, but it, it, it's reminiscent to those old days. Right. And, and I, I like that. That's what the CEO is doing is, is bringing back some of those things that did work. Right. That, that was popular within the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then with that being said, like, I truly believe we, we have a coaching staff that is like the best coaching staff we've ever had. They, they're so incredible. They're so bought in. They're mm. so invested in their athletes. Uh, and then lastly, like we have some really great youth athletes that we're developing right now. Um, Dolan Pepper, who is a man child, snatching 300 pounds, you know, not even 20 years old. Uh, Emma Carey, the 16 year old phenom who, 
who basically just said like, you know what, I'm not even going to compete in the teens this year. I'm not even going to go to do the qualifier because I am going on the big stage. You know, she's stepping up to that challenge to, to, to you know, challenge herself to go against the, the top of the world. Uh, Tudem Bagda. Uh, we have, yeah, just some incredible youth talent that we decided to invest in a couple of years ago. Uh, that's, it's, their, their training and their dedication is really starting to pay off, but it's a testament of their coaches. Matt Torres, who is one of our one-on-one coaches, uh, L, who is one of our one-on-one coaches, they deal with a lot of these elite athletes. And to watch them develop from, you know, a youth Dolan Pepper. I look at Dolan, you know, three years ago when he's winning the CrossFit Games at like 15 years old to like yeah. now. I'm like, he's a, he's a, he's a man now, right? Yeah. And, and we help create this man <laughs> snatching 300 pounds. It's amazing. Like, let's go, right? That's amazing. It, it's not like we, we it's not like we picked up this elite athlete, you know, that transferred to us, you know, at twenty eight years old from, you know, comp train or from another training system, right? We were able to take these young youth athletes yeah. and develop them uh, you know, not necessarily truly raw, but you know, uh develop just a young developing athlete to yeah. now top of the world, right? And that that really excites me is the is the youth and, and what's coming up uh with Brute uh, in the near future. I think brute is becoming synonymous, if I may be so bold, with the future of the sport. I, 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 I agree. Really do. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate so, that. Yeah, man, absolutely. Um, okay, well, let me ask because uh, you because you talked a lot about uh, the one on one coaches. If people hear this and are like, okay, hey, I'm interested, but you know, I, I, I kind of want to dip a dip a toe in. <laughs> it's a little cold. I'm not sure. Um, how can people get involved? Yep, uh, you can go to brutestrengthtraining.com. Uh, or you can contact us on, on any of our social media. Uh, but the main thing is that people don't realize is that we have a, a free assessment and a free call with one of our coaches. There's no commitment. All it is is you're going to go. We'll send you this assessment to fill out. We're going to ask you a bunch of questions about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what are your times on these CrossFit exercises? What is your max snatch, clean, jerk? Uh, how many pull-ups can you do in a row? How many ring muscle-ups can you do in this, this amount of time, mm -hmm. right? And then from there, we can build out essentially what your CrossFit DNA is, right? right. Uh, we can analyze what your strength and what your weaknesses are. And then we, we want to hop on a phone call with you and just talk through the assessment. Basically be like, hey, man, you really need to, you know, focus on your uh, pushing strength. You know, uh, anything overhead like a, a handstand walking or a handstand push-ups is, is where you're really struggling with. If you can move that number from 15 to 20, you're going to see a huge increase in these types of Metcons, right? Uh, and, and it's completely free. There's no obligation. You talk to this coach. Right. We're just going to talk to you and, and go over, you know, some of your strength and weaknesses. And then you can walk away and, and then build your program by yourself. Or if you enjoyed the conversation with the coach and you think like, man, like this coach is pretty knowledgeable. Like I'd be curious to, to, to learn more about this. Right. Then that coach is available uh, to, to kind of walk you through how the next steps of the process would be, how your relationship with the one on one coach would work, working together with them. Uh, so yeah, one of the best ways to get involved, just to find out who, who we are and what we're about is to take a, the free assessment. You know, I, I implore you to hop on a free call with one of our one-on-one -on -one coaches, a true one-on-one -on -one coach. It's not a salesman. It is one of our one-on-one -on -one coaches, right? That yeah. are training some of our most elite athletes in the world. Exactly. Yeah. And they're just going to go over, you know, uh, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Right. And like I said, no obligation. Uh, we're not going to continue to hound you after that. You know, if, if you choose not to, to join our program, we're not going to send you an email every day or two days like, hey, you, you want to consider it? Hey, we'll give you a discount. Hey, hey, hey. No. Like, if it wasn't a fit, we, we, we understand. But if you see some value there, uh, you know, take us, uh, give us a shot. And that's BruteStrengthTraining.com or Brute.Strength on Instagram. And you can find any... Uh, you know, you can DM or you can, uh, you know, reach out in any of those channels and there will be someone that will be happy to respond and uh, get you what Matt's talking about. Absolutely. Well, Matt, anything before we jump off, anything you want to add? Uh, I really appreciate your time, man. No, again, I can't just express my excitement uh, for, for the direction of Brute. You know, uh, having uh, you, Michael, on board now and having Dex Thank on you. board too as a, as a as a one-on-one -on -one coach, content creator. Uh, I think we're, we're getting some some new fresh blood, some new energy into yeah. the company and uh, excited to start producing a lot of really good content because I think the community starts gonna, is going to start 
uh, wanting that content again, right? He's going to want to, he's going to get excited about this and, and the community is going to start rallying behind this. So I'm just excited to, to join them in that movement, in that rally back into, uh, into the sport of CrossFit. Man, I love it. All righty, Matt, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you. And, uh, we'll talk real soon. Okay. Thank you, Micah.